When people hear the word clones, they often think of these guys. But clones are actually a real thing. The definition of a clone is just an organism that is an exact genetic copy of another organism. So are the stormtroopers from Star Wars actually clones? No, they're just a bunch of soldiers dressed up in the identical same costume. So do real clones exist? Absolutely. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Clones can happen naturally. If you know a set of identical twins, you know a pair of clones. They have the exact same DNA genetic sequence. In addition to that, clones can be made in a laboratory. Today we're going to talk about how clones are made in a laboratory. But first, let's take a look at 20 organisms that have been successfully cloned by scientists all around the world. On your screen, you'll see pictures of animals that have been successfully cloned. We're going to zoom in on one animal in particular. This little girl became famous in 1996, introducing Dolly the sheep. Dolly was the first mammal to ever be successfully cloned. It took over 200 attempts to make this work. And it occurred again in 1996 in the Roslyn Institute in Scotland. Dolly lived until she was six years old. More on that in just a little bit. Let's take a look at some of the other animals that have been successfully cloned. We have fish, sheep, mice, cows, goats, pigs, cats, oxen, adorable rhesus monkeys, mouflons, rats, horses, cats, deer, ferrets, wolves, dogs, and water buffalo. So clearly scientists have had a lot of success in cloning animals. How have they come to do this in the first place? How are clones made? That brings us to our next topic, steps to cloning in a lab. So this is not a uh, cloning 101 so that everyone can go home and figure out how to clone themselves and make lots of human baby clones because obviously the science behind this is a lot more complicated than the six steps that I have listed below that follow along with the picture to the left. But this just gives you a really general idea of how scientists at the Roslyn Institute in Scotland were able to clone Dolly. Earlier, I told you that Dolly had three moms. If you look at this picture, they're labeled as A, B, and C. The first step in this cloning process is to remove the body cell from this first female sheep. By removing a body cell from this first female sheep's udders, they were able to remove a full set of chromosomes. The next step is from a separate sheep, they removed a sex cell, in this case, the egg. Next, they took the nucleus containing all of the chromosomes out of sheep A's udder cell. They took the nucleus out of sheep B's egg, got rid of that, then moved the chromosomes from sheep A's udder cells into the egg. Now, resulting in an egg, which would normally have only half the chromosome number, 
but in this case has a full set of chromosomes. So this egg right here that is pulsed with electricity to turn into this embryo has the exact genetic sequence of this very first sheep. So here's the first mom, here's the second mom, here's Dolly starting to form. Last step is that they need a female for the embryo to grow in because scientists cannot grow an animal through all of its development just in a laboratory. They still need uh, an organism to put the embryo inside of. So then they took Dolly, as she was an embryo, transplanted her into sheep C. This is the third mother. Then sheep C was pregnant for four months and then gave birth to Dolly. Dolly, although she had one, two, three mothers, was an exact genetic clone, an exact copy to sheep A because all the chromosomes came from sheep A. Sheep B provided the egg. Sheep A provided all the body cell chromosomes. Sheep C acted as a surrogate and just carried Dolly. Now, is this to say that you need to have three mothers in order to turn into a clone? Absolutely not. This was just the method that scientists at the Roslyn Institute used that proved to be the most successful. So they did use three separate sheep. That being said, there is potential had this first sheep still been alive, which by the way, she wasn't by the time Dolly was born. Had this first sheep been alive, she could have donated her own egg and her own chromosomes and gave birth to Dolly. So essentially, she could have gave birth to her own clone, but it wasn't this case when Dolly was created over in Scotland. Here's another picture that shows Dolly's experiment quite nicely. Here we have sheep A, sheep B. Notice sheep A is giving her body cell. DNA is getting taken out. Sheep B is donating her egg cell. The DNA from the nucleus take, is taken out. The DNA from sheep A is put into sheep B's nucleus. The embryo that's going to form Dolly is starting to be made in the laboratory. It is inserted into sheep C, the surrogate, and then out comes baby Dolly, an exact identical clone of sheep A, its first mother. So what is so cool about cloning? Why do scientists care about it so much? Why does the public care about it so much? Well, listed on your screen are just a few of the reasons why science is so intrigued by cloning. This type of genetic engineering can allow for animal models of disease. For instance, if scientists make a mouse in a lab with a certain disease, so that they can test it with certain medications to see if the disease is responsive to these medications, then rather than consistently injecting the disease into all these different mice, they could just make one mouse with the disease and then clone that mouse so that all the mice have this disease. Now, does this have a moral dilemma that goes along with it? Sure, if you're an animal activist, so we'll discuss that in just one minute. Another benefit of cloning would be in making stem cells. We talked about stem cells earlier in the year. These are undifferentiated cells. They are not specialized. They can, they can turn into any of the cells in the body. So if we could clone stem cells, imagine the organs that we could possibly make in laboratories. The third bullet is the potential of making copies of animals with desirable traits. Imagine that you're a farmer who, own, who owns livestock and your cows, for some reason, are making an extreme amount of milk so that the yield is so high that your farm is so successful for that year. 
You don't know what it is about these cows that allows them to make so much milk, but it's making you very successful. Now imagine if you could clone the cows that had such high yields of milk so that you could get even more money from the milk that they were producing. Again, are there some ethical dilemmas that go along with this? Cloning animals for human benefit? Of course there are. Again, we'll chat about that in just one minute. The last bullet I have is bringing back endangered or extinct species. Scientists have often considered if there were only one organism left in a certain species that was clearly endangered. Clearly, they wouldn't be able to reproduce this animal with another animal of its kind if it was the last one, but they could potentially make a clone out of it. Or what if they found an extinct species like the woolly mammoth and they were somehow able to use egg from a female elephant, transplant woolly mammoth DNA into the elephant's egg cell, and then allow an elephant to be a surrogate mother. Could we bring back an extinct animal like the woolly mammoth? There's potential for it. Again, though, does that start people thinking that, hmm, maybe we're messing with the nature of how things are supposed to go in the natural world? Again, that's another dilemma that scientists and the general population have. So if we look at what's the problem with cloning, well, there's moral and ethical dilemmas. Some people just don't think we should mess with nature. Let nature take its course. If organisms are supposed to reproduce and have organisms on their own, let that be all that actually happens. Don't mess with the natural order of things. Um, in addition, I'm going to skip down to this third one here. There are sometimes higher risks when it comes to cloning versus um, naturally occurring pregnancies. I had told you before that it took over 200 attempts for Dolly to be born. Not every attempt at cloning is actually successful. It takes dozens and even sometimes hundreds of tries before they actually get it to work. So what happens to all those other embryos that aren't actually turning into an organism? Well, they get discarded. In addition, it's been argued that clones can have shorter lifespans. We're going to continue this talk in another video when we talk about the science of aging and how Dolly only lived till she was six years old, even though the normal lifespan for a sheep of her kind is for 12 years. So there's a lot of things to think about when we're discussing cloning. One thing I want you all to think about is, are you for cloning or are you against cloning? Or are you neutral on the matter? And why? Do you think that we should be able to clone animals but not humans? Do you think we should be able to clone humans? Do you think that we shouldn't be cloning anything? We're going to have a great discussion about this in class. Until then, keep being curious.